Okay, we back in Harlem, East Harlem to be specific. Let's get to that. From 2010 to 2013, members of the Air It Out, AIO, True Money Gang, TMG, and Wode Gangs had incriminated themselves in expletive-ridden rants on social media as they terrorized a 30-block area around the northeast corner of Central Park. Police say the gangs were involved in at least three murders, 30 shootings, and countless acts of violence and robbery in the neighborhood beginning in 2009, when three members of the TMG were shot. Locals lived in fear of getting shot while trying to go about their daily lives, Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance said in a press release announcing the arrests. So, we are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. In East Harlem, specifically from October 2009 to April 2013, there were 66 non-fatal shootings and 7 homicides in an area covering less than half a square mile. However, the situation changed drastically after the implementation of the gang conspiracy indictment. Over the next year, April 2013 to April 2014, there were only three shootings in the same area, representing an 85% drop from the previous four-year average. This reduction in violence was achieved through the Manhattan District Attorney's efforts to modernize prosecution into intelligence-driven crime fighting. They established the Crime Strategies Unit CSU, which communicates daily with local police and collects data on significant criminal individuals and persons of interest, such as uncooperative witnesses. The CSU's arrest alert system ensures that any arrest made in the city involving these individuals immediately notifies a senior CSU attorney. The attorney then collaborates with a local district attorney assigned to the case to prevent the defendant from evading justice. This approach acknowledges that a defendant's official arrest and conviction history may not reflect their true position in the criminal network. For instance, a young gang member responsible for multiple shootings in his neighborhood might never have been arrested due to uncooperative witnesses or a lack of evidence. However, armed with intelligence gathered by the CSU, the prosecuting attorney can build stronger cases against such individuals and potentially convince them to cooperate. Social media has also become a valuable tool for law enforcement. The indictments in the 2013 East Harlem gang conspiracy case, for instance, consisted almost exclusively of the Facebook postings of the defendants, as well as recordings of their phone calls whenever they were confined at Rikers. Those communications gave insight to an escalating turf war that began on October 26, 2009, with a fatal broad daylight shooting of 19-year-old John Williams at a basketball game. Williams was a resident of the Johnson Houses, one of East Harlem's many sprawling public housing complexes, and a well-known figure in the area's gang scene. The gunman killed Williams with a single shot to the back of the head during an altercation near the Taft Houses. A second teen was shot in the leg during the altercation, but survived. Sources said the murder was linked to an argument the two gangs had over a gun. The witnesses to Williams' murder did not cooperate with the police. Williams was a member of the True Money Gang. Williams' fellow members in the True Money Gang, based in the Johnson Houses, believed that the Arid Out Gang, based in the neighboring Taft Houses, was responsible. Less than two weeks later, cops identified Kendall Scott, 17 at the time, as the gunman who killed John Williams. He was on the run. The Johnson House's True Money Gang formed an alliance with the Wode Gang, which is a few blocks south of Taft and based in the Lehman Houses. They planned to take revenge on Arid Out. This is how it looks from an aerial perspective. Here are the Johnson Houses, True Money Gang and their allies, the Lehman Houses, Wode. Here is Taft Houses. Two of the warring projects, Johnson and Taft, were only separated by Park Avenue and an elevated railroad track. Anyway, the death of John Williams would be a plague of violence over the next three years. Gunfire erupted in public thoroughfares, fights broke out in Manhattan's courthouses, a True Money Gang member was stomped on the head while held underwater in Central Park's Harlem Mirror. In late December 2009, Alex, then 16 and a member of Air It Out, was shot. A member of True Money Gang, Tremaine Cosby, repeatedly expressed a need to avenge Williams' death. He began a bloody tirade, boasting on Facebook along the way, according to the indictment. Mr. Cosby, then 18, shot a rival on November 19, 2010. Cosby was at pop, and the Air Out crew sought to kill him. Joseph, aka G Lock, was one of the Air It Out members gunning for Cosby, and social media posts revealed that. On December 14, 2010, G. Locke wrote, ripped Tremaine Crosby. This was a direct threat to Maine. 
According to the indictment, on January 7, 2011, Scrap and another member of AIO was in the area of the Johnson Houses, home of the True Money Gang. They were armed with a 22 handgun and spotted Maine. One of them drew the gun and fired at Maine. Now things get a little blurry here, because according to officials, Maine did shoot someone this day, and he was also charged with shooting Scrap at some point. This would possibly mean that during this shooting, Maine fired as well, getting the best of the exchange by striking Scrap, who was the top defendant in the AIO indictment. However, Maine was not hit, and Scrap was arrested. Maine later posted on his Facebook page. Taft dead, AIO dead. Maine was also charged with shooting, Justin, another Air It Out member, so there could possibly be a mix-up there. A few days after the Maine and Scrap Sitchy, G Lock was back at it on social media as well. He posted, time to catch headshots on that fat cheesecake mother effer, f fuck that, free scrapper die, this wasn't hard to decipher for law enforcement. It simply meant, it was time to shoot Maine in the head, encouraged fellow gang members to retaliate against True Money Gang, and acknowledge the arrest of Scrap. On January 7, a week after the attempt by Scrap to shoot Maine, G Lock wrote, I love when I got the grip, and the AIO goons tell me bust that shit and it start going up like it's July 4th. Then a week later, on January 21, 2011, G Lock wrote, We gonna kill Tremaine Cosby fat ASS. In fact, 10 days later, Maine had again become a target. On January 31, 2011, he encountered AIO member, Kreider, in the vicinity of Madison Avenue between East 112th and 115th Streets. Shots were fired. Kreider was hit, Mr. Cosby was not, the indictment said. Mr. Kreider complained to a fellow gang member on Facebook that day that his gun just clicked when he pulled the trigger. I could have killed Maine, he said, but there's no bullets. On April 24, 2011, near the Taft Building on 112th and Madison, Eric, accompanied by Mike, Monday, George, Kreider and other AIO members, pointed and repeatedly fired a 40 caliber pistol at a group of people who were running south on Madison Avenue. Not sure if TMG or Wode was who they were shooting at, but in this situation, they were shooting from their own turf. There was another shooting in AIO territory a few days later on May 3. While Lair It Out member George held the door open to the building on 112th Street, G Lock, and Monday ran after a Wode gang member named John and another person. G Lock possessed a loaded 25 caliber pistol and pointed and fired the pistol at the other person, striking them in the leg. By June, Air It Out member, Boogie, who was incarcerated at the time, told an associate of a rumored secret indictment against the gang and vowed to snuff the suspected snitcher when he got out of jail. The indictment would soon come to fruition, for now, intel was being gathered. It was tit-for-tat shootings, and no bodies had dropped since the murder of John Williams back in 09. But the summer of 2011 changed all that. On July 15, 2011, a teenager was shot to death while making a trip to a corner store near his home in East Harlem. Police say a man came up to Juan Ortero, 15, in front of the Peaceful Valley Community Garden at East 117th Street and Madison Avenue around 9.30 p.m. and opened fire. Reports said that Otero was shot three times and was rushed to Metropolitan Hospital. Juan, who had the alias, Chica Ding, repped AIO, the Air It Out crew. Seven months earlier, he was shot in the hand at a party in another housing project on Park Avenue. He also had a prior arrest for robbery. This time, he wasn't so lucky. A bullet had entered his stomach and killed him. He was dead before he even hit the hospital, his mother said. He ain't never gonna come back home. He's never coming home. A makeshift memorial with 15 candles, one for each year that Ortero lived, marked the spot where the 10th grader was gunned down. According to his mom, she came home and the streets were taped off. She had a gut feeling. She ran from Park Avenue where a cop stopped her. She's like, no and she pushed the cop out of the way. She saw her brother, and that's when she knew. His mom said her son fell in with the wrong crowd, but he didn't deserve to die. All I wanted him to do was to get an education and go to college and live a good life, that's all I wanted. For him to be good and not to worry about what's going on out there, there's nothing out there for him. That was our biggest argument with each other. She stated that her son wasn't the first, and he wouldn't be the last to die that summer. Believe me, the streets is hot, she said. There's going to be a lot more deaths and a lot of mothers feeling the way I feel. I wish them all the best, no one deserves this. Not sure if his murder has been solved even up until this day. In July 2011, Alex, who was shot back in 2009, 
said that his members were expected to retaliate, but instead three more of them had been shot, including the death of Chika Ding. Ain't no AIO until I see some blood he posted, according to the indictment. This was referring to others claiming the set and haven't put in any pain. He expressed his frustrations in a message sent to a fellow AIO member in 2011, which read. God forgives, I don't, somebody gotta die. In September 2011, Alex offered $300 via Facebook to Day Day, an AIO member, if he clapped a trill, TMG, or Woe Day, before October. In attempt to conceal the bounty he added, erase these messages now. In October 2011, Kreider sent a message to Alex, saying he had been shot in the foot by a rival with the Wode gang, and was plotting revenge. Prosecutors said Alex responded, you still got the 2-5. Referring to a small caliber handgun. Earlier, we spoke about how a True Money gang member got his head stomped and held underwater at the Harlem Mirror. The Harlem Mirror is a water body in the northeast corner of Central Park and a spot for observing wildlife, relaxing, and picnicking. As you can see, it's located right here in between AIO, in the Taft Houses and Wody, in the Lehman Houses. Anyway, Martinez Linners, an AIO member, had participated in the Harlem Mirror stomping. A fellow AIO member reported in a Rikers call in September 2011 that Martinez Linners was going crazy with his gun and that he had shot at Wode and True Money gang rivals. Martinez Linners posted Taft as an acronym on Facebook in January 2012. It meant this. Terrorizing anybody from Trella and torture anybody from 10th. The crews would exchange threats to each other the whole time via social media before another murder took place. In the previous video, we spoke about Dizzle Loke, or Ob Dizzle, the Hoover Crip that was said to have started the Wode lingo. In early 2012, 16-year-old Dizzle Loke, real name, Aubrey Jackson, was viciously beaten around the Taft houses. He died after an eight-month coma in the hospital. The nature of the beating was not discussed, and we don't know if anyone was ever charged with the murder. It makes you think about what happened to Noah from the Bronx. It's possible that it happened in a similar fashion. Coincidentally, Noah was 16, as was Dizzle. Today, the Wode crew still celebrates Ob Dizzle, and the hood still identifies as LVLA, in honor of fallen member LA. We will get to LA's timeline in a later video. As for Ob Dizzle though, he knew he himself was a target. He sent a Facebook message to one of Wode's ringleaders in March 2011. AIO ninjas came for me man and then asked for a gun. Ah right, when you gonna let me hold that? You got one for sale. Wode ringleader, Gabe, aka, Grizzy, posted to the late Dizzle in 2011. Nah, I got the 2-5 joint, but it don't flocka because JP lost the fire pin. Just gas somebody up to buy it for 250, and I will buy another one and let y'all little woes hold it down. Unfortunately, Aubrey didn't see past the year 2012. Although Grizz was willing to have his fellow Wode members hold his gun, other Confederates were not always so gracious. Mac Lex, another member, boasted from Rikers in September 2011 that he had a new gun, and he wasn't sharing it with anyone. In mid-June of 2012, a 17-year-old teen was arrested after allegedly firing on a crowd of people and then leading police on a wild chase through East Harlem. The suspect was Sean, a member of the Wode gang. It was alleged that Sean fired his revolver several times at a group of people on the around the Taft houses on 112th and 113th around 11.15 p.m. No one was hit by the bullets though. Three officers part of the Manhattan North Gang Unit observed the shooting and chased after Sean, who fled on a walkway through rival arid out territory, Taft Houses, and across Fifth Avenue to Martin Luther King Jr. Towers, also known as Forsta, Forsta Projects. Anyway, during the chase, cops said Terrell pointed his gun at the officers. Police fired at him, but no one was hit. Eventually, he was caught. He was hit with wild charges. Now, we have to get back to AIO member, Martinez Linners, who we spoke about earlier. Remember? The one whose gun was said to be going crazy. Yeah. Well, in late May of 2017, cops charged 21-year-old Martinez Linners with the murder of Ramiz Mara, who went by the name, Rambo. Mara was blasted in the chest, left arm, and right thigh, leaving the truth bar on Bronx Wood Avenue near East 221st Street in Williamsbridge about 4 a.m. The victim was arguing with Martinez Linners and 23-year-old Tyrell, when Martinez Linners whipped out a 380 caliber pistol and shot Mara, according to cops. Friends loaded Mara into a car and rushed him to Jacoby Medical Center, where he died. 
Tyrell, who did two years in prison on a robbery conviction in 2013, was taken into custody at the scene. He was charged with murder for his collusion with Martinez Linners when the victim was shot. Cops caught up with Martinez Linners at his apartment in the Parkside Houses in Allerton later on. The Truth Bar used to be named Club Mystique and was listed on the NYPD's 10 most notorious clubs. From what we know, this situation was unrelated to the indictment. This event would close out the story, but then there is this part. The first murder we talked about in this story was that of John Williams, which took place on October 25, 2009. As we stated it would take a decade for his killer to be apprehended. In February of 2020, Kendall Scott, 27 at the time, was busted by local authorities in Charlotte, North Carolina. Scott was 17 and a member of Air It Out when he killed Williams, the rival True Money gang member. The hunt for Scott included efforts to find him in Texas, Canada and the Dominican Republic, and at one point he was suspected of working as a construction contractor for the US military in the Middle East, sources said. Scott was sharing a home with two men, one older and one younger, when he was arrested. He had been living there for at least several months, if not several years, and it was unclear how he's been supporting himself. He doesn't move around much, so that's part of the mystery about how he survived one source said. In 2009, Kendall Scott was most wanted. Scott refused to talk to authorities and demanded a lawyer when he was busted. Not sure what his sentence was, but it wouldn't be foolish to think he was hit with a lot of years in prison. This about wraps this story up. In a future video, we will be doing some. Oops, can't say. We understand that a lot has changed since these times, and we want to update certain affiliations. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.